Here we are on the western edge of Massachusetts, where we explore the past and present of American culture. Join us as Artifications explores the Berkshires. Ah, the Berkshires, known for its scenic beauty and culture. The area that we know as the Berkshires is actually the southern end of the Green Mountain Range that originates in Vermont. We will be exploring the Berkshires in search of unforgettable and accessible art scenes hidden all over the county. Be they large or small, the artistic diversity in this area is enough to keep any art seeker enthralled. The history of the Berkshires extends back thousands of years. By the time early settlers reached as far as Stockbridge, Massachusetts in the early 1700s, nearly 90% of the local indigenous population had been wiped out, largely in part to the germs carried over by the settlers. As time progressed, this place between places known as the Berkshires with its idyllic rolling hills had come to leave an indelible mark on the minds of travelers who came through and especially the artists. In the northwestern corner of Massachusetts, winding rural roads snake through the Berkshire Mountains and lead to small towns that boast exciting arts and cultural scenes. One of these is Williamstown, home to the Williams College Museum of Art and Sterling and Francis Clark Art Institute. The town first saw population growth in the 1740s as part of an effort by the Massachusetts Bay Colony to encourage settlement in what was then the western frontier of English colonial territory. In 1791, the Williams College was founded as a specific bequest of Colonel Ephraim Williams, who fought in the Seven Years' War. The free school became Williams College in 1793. It currently stands as one of the nation's premier private liberal art institutions. One of its 100 buildings is the illustrious Williams College Museum of Art. The museum, which is free and open to the public, is small, but boasts an impressive, interesting, and eclectic collection of paintings, photography, and archaeological relics, and offers rotating exhibits on a variety of themes. High ceilings and skylights make each gallery feel spacious. The museum's role as an instructional space for college students is also clear, particularly in an exhibit that stems from a project titled Walls. The project loans art from their collection to display in student dorm rooms. The current special exhibition, Dance We Must, Treasures from Jacob's Pillow, between 1906 and 1940, provides museum goers with a multifaceted artistic and historical experience. The show connects these two distinguished institutions by displaying decades of original costumes alongside promotional photographs, videos, paintings, and drawings. The exhibit explores the lives and works of American modern dance pioneers Ted Sean and Ruth St. Dennis. The pair drew fans and followers from around the world and made a distinct mark on the Berkshires when Sean established Jacob's Pillow Dance Facility in Beckett, Massachusetts in 1930. Dennis Sean, as the duo were known, explored and put on dances influenced by a wide range of cultures, but their stereotypical performances bristle against contemporary understandings of Orientalism and cultural appropriation. The discomfort in this exhibit is necessary and reminds us that the history of cultural and artistic progress can be simultaneously inspiring and problematic, complicated and beautiful. Williamstown and the institutions it works with have helped to reshape the identity of the arts in northern Berkshire County. We're headed south to what can be considered the heart of the Berkshires. Since the mid-1800s, generations of artists have descended upon this area in search of inspiration. One such popular destination is Lenox. Originally the county seat, Lenox maintains its stately presence with manicured lawns, numerous historical monuments, and an assortment of galleries. Our first stop is a community exhibition taking place at the Lenox Library. Built in 1860, it was the original county courthouse for all of Berkshire County. When the county seat moved north to Pittsfield, the courthouse was repurposed as a lending library. The sheer size of the former courthouse 
allows for exhibitions by local artists. And we were surprised to find exactly just how much there was to offer. center of town leads you through a number of historical buildings. Many of them are occupied by art galleries, personal showcases, and cooperatives. We stopped in in one gallery to speak with the organizer about arts in Lenox and its role in the community. Okay, so my name is Harriet Candy and I opened up this gallery called uh, the Artful Mind Gallery uh, May 1st. It is a, um, a connection and a route to my publishing end of things, which I run a business, um, a magazine called The Artful Mind. Uh, this space was offered to me. I fell in love with it. As you can see, it's got very nice history to it. The floors are great, the ceilings are great. The garden's beautiful, the outside, the tile, everything we just said, yes, do it. When you publish a magazine, an arts magazine, you're the curator now when you transform it to an actual reality space, it's almost like giving yourself wings. If you're interested and you want to get involved, and you don't have to be from the Berkshires, if you want your wor work out of your closets because you have a lot of it and you love it and you think it's sellable, then maybe we should take a look at it and then see if you, can, you would fit into the space. Greylock is the tallest peak in all of Massachusetts, with views of the Adirondacks over 100 miles away. Over the course of the last four ice ages, the summit of this mountain has at one time been covered with over 4,000 feet of ice. Over the side of Greylock, you will see our next destination, the town of North Adams, Massachusetts, home of Mass Mocha. <laughs> Welcome to Mass Mocha, or Massachusetts Museum of Contemporary Art. This is one of the largest centers for contemporary art in the United States. Over one whole year, it will provide visitors with 75 performances from varying artistic disciplines and hundreds of thousands of square feet of exhibition space. Some of these installations are immense and needed proper space in order to capture their full impact. Other exhibitions cycle through the floors, and you just get the sense you couldn't possibly see everything in just one visit. It was the creation of this beloved arts institution that may have staved this area from possible peril, proving once again that when taken seriously, the arts community and the city community can work peaceably to create sustained economic gains. Since its opening in 1999, Mass Mocha has spearheaded an economic transformation in the region. Not only has it transformed this area into an arts powerhouse, but has also further emboldened the local independent artists in celebrating the town's artistic legacy. We visited a number of these independent galleries around town and stopped at one specific bookend of the North Adam Arts community. Welcome to Eclipse Mills. This converted textile mill is home to a bevy of independent artists. Its high ceilings and 10-foot tall glass windows make for ideal showing circumstances for all kinds of art. We stopped to speak with one resident of Eclipse Mills to talk about its role in transforming this local community. Uh, my name is Ralph Brill and I'm the uh, director of the Brill Gallery here which is located in the Eclipse Mill in North Adams, Massachusetts. This was a uh, cotton mill in the 1800s and about 10 years ago this was renovated into 40 artists that live and work here. And three of us who are towards the entry here are more commercial. So this is a art gallery um, and we have um, musicians, dancers, writers, a variety of artists that are part of the 40 who 
own their units. This is a condominium live work situation. Uh, in any case, uh, this exhibition that's up now is called the Tattooed Ladies Along the Mohawk Trail. So the road that runs in front of the Eclipse Mill where we are today has another name. It's called the Mohawk Trail. In any case, the uh, Mohawks would bring pelts and uh, maple syrup and trade with the Boston Indians for seashells and medicine. So uh, most of these artists are located in this region or come here and spend some time uh, in this region. About 10 years ago, this was a very, very depressed community. Uh, the What is Mass Mocha today was a vacant mill building. And as I mentioned to you, this was a cotton mill. That was a con cotton printing plant originally, with the largest in the world. Then it became the largest capacitor plant in the world. And uh, eventually that failed. So it left thousands of workers here without a job. And this place got very depressed for a very long time. Uh, Mass Mocha took over those vacant mill buildings and start to stimulate the area and artists start to move in. What's happening now is it's drawing more artists as word is getting out about the fact that we are neighbors to three world-class museums. We have the Clark, 10 minutes away, which is like a mini metropolitan museum of art. We have the Williams College Museum of Art, which is a teaching museum, just 10 minutes down the road, and that's free to the public. And then, of course, Mass Mocha and uh, that's open all year round. Mass Mocha has a program for artists to help them move here. Uh, we also have artists who on a regular basis uh, come in and show a portfolio and uh, who want to exhibit as a way to get familiar with the area. And if we're not the right gallery, we might recommend another gallery that might be. Um, we also have um, opportunities uh, uh, f to meet uh, artists, so to speak, informally at a dinner that are held on a regular basis. Uh, so we're interested in, in communicating with those artists who have an interest in the area. The Berkshires is not one place, but a collection of art-focused communities. Don't let this idyllic setting fool you. The ethos of these communities is reflected in the revolutionary monuments you can find all across Massachusetts. The state slogan is, by the sword we seek peace, but peace only under liberty. Thank you for watching Artifications. You can follow us on all of our social media platforms. Our goal here at Artifications is simple, to make the art world just a little smaller, because you can't spell Earth without art.